no, you don't. You ain't getting in here again. Aside, my friend, I stand on my constitutional rights. Go away or you'll be sitting on them. You know, you are the most consistently irritating. Okay, sir, it's a deadlock. I've got to speak to you. I claim the privilege of buying you a little drink. No, 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 really. I've got to speak Over to you. Over a little drink, my friend. Then I shall be forced to render you helpless. Drive on. Mr. Quintain, doesn't the fate of 3,000 people mean anything to you? Only the fate of one people means anything to me. She's a little skunk. Now, look here. Oh, if... leave me alone. But, Mr. Quintain, you... Sick him, baby. Sick him. Ah, now, that's the first reasonable argument you presented. Feeling better? Yeah, lots better. Oh, but what's the use of talking? Even if I could fix the picture, Sherry, you'd have to okay the cutting. Then I shall deprive her of that power. <laughs> Throw away your dream book. Mr. Quintain, there is a clause in every star player's contract. Quote, if the artist commits any act which will prejudice the public against the motion picture industry, by doing anything which may bring her into public hatred, contempt, scorn, or ridicule, the contract is then breached, unquote. So what? So I shall involve her in a scandal. <laughs> Say, that's not so funny at that. She'll let you. I'm sure she will. I've always had the impression that Miss Cherie is inclined to make advances. Hey, Dodd, you've hit something. Washing Cherie out of the picture business is the answer for both of us. Well, uh, wish me luck. Don, I've got an angle from these preview cards. I've got a hunch. I, I hope my endeavors won't be wasted. You realize that this makes you a libertine and a charlatan, don't you? Yes, I'm fully aware of that. And I'm quite willing to make the sacrifice. Wait a minute. You're not the only one that's making the sacrifice. I still love that dame. I wish I knew why. Well... All we need now to make it a real smash a are a few added shots of the gorilla. Here, I've made a list of the sets. You better go okay them so the art department can start building. Mr. Quintain, I have just been dismissed. You? Fired? Everyone. The studio has been sold to Nassau. Well, how do you like that? All this work for... And when we were that close, a couple of more days and we'd have been in the bag. Mr. Quintain, assuming you had those 48 hours, what else would you need? Nothing except those guys out there. We got the gorilla on the lot. Oh, but what difference does it make? The difference in the lives of those people. Mr. Quintain, you can have those 48 hours and that manpower. Just like that? Just like that. If those gates are locked and Nassau is prevented from taking over the studio... Yeah, but you can't do that. He's on the lot. There are 3,000 other people on this lot who might resent his presence here. You're talking about 20 years in the can. That's unlawful possession. But Colossal must be saved for those people. Hey. Whatever became of that Atterbury Dodd that used to call those guys units and cogs in a machine? Well, I, 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 I must admit to a certain modification of viewpoint. And a 20-year rap doesn't matter. It seems to me that the only thing that really matters is that a man be true to himself. I mean, for instance, if it's an essential part of his nature to be clean, then he should bathe. 
If he dislikes chicanery, he must be straightforward. Uh, not for hope of reward or fear of punishment, but because that's the kind of a man he is. It's not a question of who's right or who's wrong. It's simply a question of what's inside a person. <laughs> Does that make any sense to you? How much did he offer you? Seventy-five. How did you guess? <laughs> Sweetheart, I'll split that 20 years with you. Move over. But don't forget that in Hollywood, when you turn the other cheek, they kick it. Mr. Quintain, would you mind very much if I called you by your first name? I'd like nothing better. Thank you, Douglas. Carry on, Joan of Arc. Hello. Uh, send a truck to Mr. Kozlovsky's residence to pick up various furnishings belonging to the property department. <laughs> Mr. Quintain, please. Douglas, we are now in business. Hey, honey, if you could cook, I'd marry you. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> 